Hey guys, thank you for visiting my channel. So today's video is going to be about my co-worker from Haiti, guys. So this story takes place in Ecuador during my teaching abroad experience. Now I was in Ecuador for almost six months. Um, I really enjoyed this program. It was very well organized. There were books, there were CDs, there were spacious classrooms, there were boards, markers, anything you could ever want was there. So yeah, the program was pretty cool. However, once again, I always get haunted by these crazy people who really crave my attention for whatever reason. I never give it to them and they always, you know, act a fool. So I had been there for, I don't know, how long was I there? Maybe a few months, right? And things were cool. Like I really didn't socialize a lot when I was in Ecuador. I really spent most of my time either I was teaching, I was at the market, or sometimes on the weekends I would go out to the local club named Son Latinos. It's one of the only um, Afro-Latino clubs that was there in the town that I was staying in. So I never really hung out with my coworkers. Once again, we have nothing in common. We don't vibe on a friendship level. I'm not pushing anything as far as friendship. If we don't vibe, we don't vibe. Let's keep it professional, okay? Um, I probably went out with my coworkers maybe twice twice and I didn't find it enjoyable to be honest nothing nothing against them or anything it just wasn't enjoyable like that's it so like they will always have these expat mixers like every sorry about this hair but the wind is blowing they will have these expat mi mixers like every let's say every Thursday at like 11 10 or 11 p.m. I would never go. Why? Because there's a room full of people twice my age. Look, we had nothing in common, okay? And I'm not anyone who's going to fake the funk. But, however, I was lucky enough to find some people to socialize with here and there. So I was cool on friends. And I'm the type of person to where I don't need to have friends to go out if I want to go out if I feel like dancing guess what I'm gonna do my makeup I'm gonna do my hair I'm gonna put on something cute I'm gonna catch a taxi to the nearest um, club and I'm gonna sit at the bar and be cute and dance do what I want to do when you're traveling solo that's what you do you do you, you ride for yourself and if you don't like the company around you you don't have to just stick to, uh, you don't have to cling just to anybody because you want friends not me anyway so yeah I met my own friends people from the community but I didn't really hang out with the expat community boom for some freaking reason my co-worker first of all let's get on him this kid was like 24 um, from Atlanta he had the worst attitude you could imagine first of all he was a teacher from Hades, okay? He would let his classes out 30, 45 minutes early. And I'm not talking about adults who are like, hey, can we go home early? Like children, okay? He would be playing all types of reggaeton in the class, and that's really inappropriate. Like, as a teacher, are you playing Migos in the classroom? Future? 21 Savage? No. Um, he would be like they would be making terrible grades he couldn't control them they were running in and out of the classroom he was terrible like um sometimes if you let your classes out too early she would dock your pay because you're not going to get paid for hours that you're not working right so that would happen to him he would pitch a bf over losing a couple of dollars okay so one time, I think basically he quit. He just quit. He said, you know what? I don't want to be a teacher anymore. I'm leaving. Why did this man stay in the school, living on the school premises for like an extra two weeks after he quit? So I had to take up the slack for his class, which their grades were terrible. They weren't used to focusing and actually doing work. So by the time I came around, they're like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, who's the new person? Um, so I had to take on his class once and we were in the same classroom for whatever reason and 
I guess I didn't greet him the way he wanted me to. And he was like, what's your problem? I was like, um, what did I say? I said something like, who are you talking to? Like, watch your mouth or something like that. I really, at, by the, at this point, I was just like over it. I was over the whole, the whole thing, like how bratty he was, how he was still getting the pleasure of quitting and still living with the rest of the teachers and just traveling with his little backpack, like everything was all good. Like this kid was a brat. So I pretty much told him like, keep it moving, watch your mouth, okay? So that same night, he wrote the most disgusting letter and posted it to my door. Keep in mind, he lived right across the hall from me. So my door is here, his door is here. He decides to put a, stick a nasty little note on my door. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Who do you think you are? You never want to hang out with us. You never wanted to be my friend. Are you fucking racist? Blah, blah, blah. Like he was so nasty in this letter. So what do I do? I took the letter down to the director. She's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. I don't know what's going on. We'll, get, we'll figure it out. I can't believe this. I don't think you're racist by any means. You don't have to hang out with who you don't want to hang out with. Like, you're here to work. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that exactly. So, um, I asked her about it, like, the next day. I said, hey, have you talked to Colin? Well, you know, I've seen him, but, you know, I didn't really want to bring it up to him. So, basically, this psycho continued to live across the hall from me as unstable and entitled and freaking psycho he the psycho that he was he continued to live across the hall from me a good week after the incident and i'm like i keep going to her like hey when is he leaving i don't feel safe like he's clearly unstable can you get him out of here like what's going on and basically she was too scared to say anything to him i don't know why she didn't like get her husband involved but like that's the thing i always get stuck around people who just crave my attention i don't give it to them and then they freaking pitch a bf you don't want to be my friend you're racist la, 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 la. just outright he was so aggressive like when i would see him he would just stare at me and I would just stare at him like, ooh, what is your issue? You're a grown man. I can't offer you anything. I don't want your friendship. I don't want your time. I, there's nothing about you that, that makes me want to befriend you or have you in my personal space. Look at you, how you act. So, yeah, he finally ended up moving out. But that was horrible. You know why? Because I feel like if I would have pitched a fit and went full-blown Shaquita on the director talking about why are you taking money out of my check? I need every dollar. If I was playing freaking 21 Savage for my students, if I was freaking letting my classes out 30 minutes early every day, if I was to post a, a disgusting letter to any one of those other teachers, do you really think that I would be living amongst those other teachers for a week or two after that? and backpacking and going on tours with my shades on like everything is okay do you guys really believe that no it would never happen and so that really kind of i kind of i don't know i kind of lost my taste for the whole situation after that because i felt like it really wasn't handled in a way that was you know professional it's like this guy this man is showing aggression to me as a woman a small little thing honey this is a big man okay like he's he wasn't no little okay let's not worry about him like if he wanted to go crazy and really act a fool he could have done that and skipped out of the country and then what because you let him live right across the hall from me for a good week and a half after I expressed that I felt unsafe so man I don't know we really have to start traveling so that we're really not the only minority teachers in these programs because guess what like no one's catering to you and when people do want to freak out guess what it's like up oh, sorry you know just wait it out everything will be okay so yeah that was annoying and then like another time 
we were getting paid I was the only one who, who received the check of course I handed it back because it was the second time and I asked the, the lady who delivered it to me, I said, hey, did everybody else get a check? And she was like, no. So I gave her the check back and she brought me back cash. So the fact that you wrote me a check for my pay when you actually had the cash, that was very annoying as well. You know what I mean? Just stuff, just like little things to really aggravate me. And everybody else, all the other teachers, well, no, not all the other teachers. It was one, like Adam. He was really chill. But everybody else would be like pitching BFs, complaining, whining, talking back to the director. I mean, to going in like, I need more time and they're not ready and just like wilding. Me, I'm never on that. I'm always professional doing my work and I'm out of there. That's it. I go to work, do my job, leave, socialize outside of all the madness because generally i'm not teaching with people that i have anything in common with that's just ah, that's just the facts but anyway this is my um the one you know just a few little things that happened to me while i was teaching abroad in ecuador insane entitled aggressive co-worker and being paid with a check when everybody else gets cash why did you do that because you knew that those other people would go crazy if you handed them a check so you decided to give it to me thinking that i would take it nope you can take it back so remember guys when you to my melanated people who are teaching abroad speak up for yourself protect yourself and continue to push forward stay out of any drama if you can um ah, oh. Stay out of any drama if you can. Get in there, do your work, socialize with your coworkers if you can, but if you don't, do not feel bad. But sometimes, for whatever reason, you will be targeted. They will try to pay you with a check when everybody else gets the cash. People will feel entitled to your friendship for whatever reason. I don't know what that's about, but yeah, people are gonna feel some type of way if you don't socialize with them. But yeah, this is my horror story from Ecuador. Let me get, let me know what you guys think. Please post your comments and don't forget to thumbs up this video for more videos. Much love and peace. We'll talk later. Besitos.